NBC Sports. You are looking live at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, Iowa, where the Hawkeyes can move a giant step toward Pasadena and the Rose Bowl. Take a look at the Big Ten standings. The Hawkeyes remain in the driver's seat, and a win today against Purdue would eliminate Illinois, Michigan, and Michigan State. Meanwhile, the Buckeyes of Ohio State are in a dogfight against the Wisconsin Badgers. It is 14-10 Ohio State at the half. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I'm Brent Musburger. What a heartbreaking loss it was last Saturday for the Hawkeyes. And Dick Vermeil, I know you've been with the coaches and the players. How did the team come out of that setback at the hands of the Buckeyes? Well, Brent, I'll tell you, I really believe the players have recovered better than the coaches. They're more resilient. The coaches are still bleeding. Each time you talk to a coach, he starts talking about last Saturday and this might have happened, this might have happened. It's tough to get over those. Even though they're a 26-point favorite, the Hawkeyes have to do it on the field. Well, starting in front of Davis here for this defense. Rod Davis not there in that lineup. Maria Crane, he will step in for Moses Santos, who is out with an injury. John Derby and Melvin Foster are the inside linebackers. And Book is missing from that defensive backfield for the Hawkeyes. And Gary Clark, number 19, steps in. So Matt Rogers with Montgomery Bell, Hughes, and Smith as his skill players on the field and a very talented offensive line. Davis, Devlin there at center, Miller, Baxley, and how about Michael Titley, the tight end? Hunter and the Boilermakers. The only running back now is the quarterback, Eric the Great, with a short drop over the middle, dropped and almost an easy reception on the ricochet. Ball is picked off by Clark. So the young man who couldn't hold on to the interception a week ago comes up with a ricochet early. But again, it's a drop ball by Jeff Hill as Melvin Foster got back defensively. As you take a look at from the end zone, there was a man in motion. You don't see any back in the backfield. He's gone in motion. He spread the defense. Now he wants to hit the seam in the zone. He does. They were caught off balance. He catches it there, bobbles it, pushes it in the air. He taps it in the air. And you know, actually, Brent, coaches coach these kind of drills on the practice field where they get in hot ball drills and bat them around to make players aware that things like this do happen in ball games. The tip drill worked today. And it's first and ten with Hughes in motion behind Rogers. And again it is Bell bouncing to the outside this time. A first down across midfield. He audibled here. Oh, and this side of the snap. Ball was put down on the bobble snap, and Purdue jumped on it at the bottom of the pile. They're signaling that they've got it, and they do. Purdue does not show motion this time. Ogilvy back to protect. Iowa sacked here nine times last season, and now Jim Johnson gets number one here today. A 12-yard loss for Purdue. Iowa now trying to move a step closer. Great fake by Rogers. He does that as well as anybody in college football. Complete to Smith and out of bounds at the 35-yard line. A 23-yard gain. Rogers drops straight back. It's a swing to score for the touchdown. And that is Stewart's first receiving touchdown of the year as Jeff Skillet adds the extra point. He's now 38 of 41. Here's another look at it. Straight drop back. There's the pick right in the middle of your screen. He ran right into the outside linebacker, 48, Jim Schwantz. There he is. No one covering him because he was actually blocked by the wide receiver. Purdue down by I-7 into Iowa territory. Bumble! Leroy Smith. First and 10 for Iowa. Hawkeyes on their own 48-yard line. Rodgers on first down with plenty of time. It's Sean Smith inside the 40-yard line. First and 10 for the Hawks after a 15-yard gain. Fourth down now. Stewart and Montgomery in a backfield. The draw, Stewart, first down. It's going to depend on where they spot it. It's going to be very close. I don't think it's close. I don't think he made it. <laughs> they didn't make it. That's a big lift for Purdue. Emotionally, when a team comes into a stadium like this way, with the odds against them, the points against them, and they do things like this, it keeps building their confidence. Some nice plays by this defense. It's only a seven-point Iowa lead. 
I think Quinn is telling Hunter that he's going to have to go ahead because the wide men are not included. Seven yards outside of those tackles. They do not have to hear under the change in rules this year. What a quarterback has to do with his wide receivers is use hand signals to relay it. Pennick Stadium is notorious as the noisiest field in the Big Ten. Now they need six yards for a first down. They trail it by a touchdown. Hawkeyes left blitz, and Hunter says he can't be hurt again as he makes the call at the line. Quinn will give him the benefit of the doubt. He agrees with him this time completely. You could tell by the way he was shaking his head. That's the second foul ball. Second foul ball. Here comes the warning from the PA. and a charge timeout on the defensive team. <laughs> he came up to me and told me that yesterday. So, Steve, message is delivered, and the field goal is on the money. The barefooted field goal specialist with a 39-yarder, and Purdue staying alive here, Dick. Let's get an overview from you. A lot of our folks may not have watched the start of this game. What's your feeling about what's happening here? They're much more alive than the 24, 26 point favored uh, is really. I mean, they're in a situation, they're moving the ball, throwing the ball with their run and shoot. A beautiful fake. Looking for Hughes. You can see how tough it is to defend a play action pass. See the fakes inside. It looks run. There's Scania, number 40, gets in, gets a good heat. But no help inside on scales. He needed a safety in there to help him. You see, he's trying to cover him inside. Now he gives him a little juke move outside, beats him inside. No safety there. Boy, that's tough coverage if you don't have help inside. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Alex <Agassi. laughs> here comes. He's going to be happy to hear that ass. Uh, here he comes. <laughs> Callaway at the 15-yard line. Oh, 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 oh. He did a good job of stripping it, number 32, Mike Sanders did. Mike Sanders, a wide receiver, running back guy. You don't see many wide receivers that do cover kickoffs like that. That is a big, big play. Change in field position, first down on the 26-yard line. You'll see it flash from the right side of your screen. Here he comes. He starts up inside. Here he comes. Boom. He strips him. It went right out underneath the elbow. And any time you get your elbow out away from the body, and that's the arm you're carrying the ball in, and you get hit, you're going to fumble the football. That's the cardinal sin. Third and long for Iowa. Complete the Sanders at the 20, but short of that first down as Steve Jackson was there in a hurry. Well, they'll go for it on fourth down for the second time today. They failed their first effort, and this is fourth and five. They haven't been able to find Titley, the tight end yet here today. Rodgers back under pressure. Fumble, Purdue went after it, and it doesn't matter. It's fourth down anyway. Purdue ball. It doesn't matter who recovered it. Now, Hunter. Whew. Complete at midfield. Oh, and what a blow by Melvin Foster on Jermaine Ross. I mean, 66 came in unloaded. And one other uh, bad note for the Iowa football team is that Nick Bell, their starting running back, is out of the game with a severely sprained ankle. So that surely will hurt the hopes of Iowa. And it means, Mark, that Tony Stewart, we met his mother in the first half, number 21, now carrying the ball. He'll have to do it at running back. 
Nothing wrong with this effort as he busts out to the 43-yard line on the first offensive play of the second okay. half. He's audibly. Complete to Sanders. Inside the 15, three for the touchdown. What a great run by Sanders after the catch. As you take a look at this right here, the quarterback, Rodgers, was audible. He looked up and he saw them and backed off coverage. His zone, he audible to the hitch pass to the left. They weren't up tight coverage. Now you see Saunders, number 32, gunning the ball. And you know, he was a running back a year ago and may be a running back next year. And you can see why he may be a running back next year. Skillet adds the extra point. And for the first time today, number one, Steve Jackson cannot make a tackle. And the Hawkeyes have scored their third touchdown. Right. Well, Jackson actually in this situation didn't come to balance properly. He sees attacking his feet are together. When you're going to tackle a guy in open field like that, you got to keep those feet apart. Poor tackling all the way. You've got to get your arms around him, man. You can't butt him down. Now let's go to Mark Jones. Mark? Well, guys, got uh, Nick Bell with me. And Nick, you got to be really disappointed about not being able to play in this game today. Uh, tell us about the extent of your ankle injury. Well, you know, right now it's just a uh, sprain, which is reoccurred from last week. And, uh, no, uh, the doctors just don't feel it's smart for me to come out right now. Nick, I spoke with your brother last week, and we both spoke with him, and uh, he wouldn't be very happy about the situation now. He's a GI in the 703rd Battalion in West Germany. What kind of message would you have for him if he was watching right now on the American Forces Network? Uh, just tell him not to worry, and uh, I'll be back, and, you know, we have a lot further to go and as soon as we win this game. You going to try and book him a ticket for the Rose Bowl if you get there? If he can get out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nick Bell, I uh, hope you recover soon and good luck to you the rest okay. of the season. Thank you. Brent, Dick, back to you. Thank you, Mark. Tough day for Bell. This was his last game at Kinnick Stadium. One of the 15 seniors making their last appearance here at Iowa City. And he's one of the top seniors who will be coming out with a chance to make the NFL next season. They show blitz. They're coming. Oh, he throws the interception high. At the 45, it is Gary Clark's second interception of the game. Jimmy Hartley. That's a great name here at Iowa, isn't it? His brother, Chuck Hartley. Skillet with a 21-yarder and a penalty flag down again. Iowa. Leads it 24-3. We'll come back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. The Hawkeyes were favored by 26. They lead it by 21, 24-3. Purdue on fourth down to punt it. Eric Bloom, who has been their standout here this afternoon. Hoists another one. There's going to be a little return cushion here. Natalie at the 30. To the middle, and it's open. 50, 40. One man to beat is Bloom, and he got it. He saved a touchdown. 47 yards on the return. Watch for Iowa to look for the big one here. They do. Rodgers on the fake. Got time. Goes to the corner. And oh, out of bounds at the six-yard line. Good concept there. Good concept. Play action pass away from the throw. Keep all the defense looking left. Now, see what I'm talking about? Here he's going to run action here. All right, that gets everybody thinking here. Now that totally isolates here. He goes in, goes to the corner. Good call, good design, good protection. You need protection to throw this. He's throwing a back across the grain. No help, one-on-one, -on -one, not terrible coverage. He just put it right where he had to put it. Step over. Second goal. down and go. John Smith. Again, just straight drop back. Here it is. One, two, three, four, five. Plant. Throw it low into the outside, away from the defender. Almost batted down. Threw it right again where he had to put it. And pretty tight coverage by Jarrett Scales. Just an excellent throw. Good route. Smith. Skillet the extra point another touchdown closer to Pasadena and I'll tell you a fellow who's enjoying this one 
the former commissioner of the Big Ten, Wayne Duke, and his wife Martha in Iowa City, and his Hawkeyes are doing the job. 31 to 3. First and 10. Iowa 30. Oh, under pressure and sack at the 38-yard line by Ron Gator, number 96. Fourth and 10 now. Needs to get to the five. Pressure throws incomplete. He was under major league pressure that time. Melvin Foster got a hand on it and deflected the ball. A 20-play drive comes up empty for Purdue. This is embarrassing. This is embarrassing for this. This is a great tradition at this school. There he's got Callaway. He's got it. Get in there. Out of bounds at the seven-yard line. Eric. 50 attempts here for Eric Hunter. I tell you, when you throw the ball 50 times, you very seldom win. Very seldom win. Fake on the toss. He can get in. Touchdown, Touchdown. Purdue. Steve Wombo. It's alive. It is scooped up on that far side. Wombold is knocked down. Jason Olenzak brought it all the way back to the 35-yard line. And it was Brett Bellini who saved the moment for Purdue. Jason Olenzak. You know, he made a big interception last week. Here it is, the block, extra point. Sometimes these are low kicks rather than they are blocks, but this was a block. Boy, that he went in there and played the volleyball block. right there, right up the gut. Now it's picked up there by Olenzak, old Dr. Olenzak. He's a pre-med student, performing a pretty good operation on this return. <laughs> Getting good interference. <laughs> He's probably running out of gas. He said, call the ambulance. <laughs> Second down and four. Hartley on the roll. Tucks it away. And blasts inside the 20 yard line. A good looking runner, isn't he? Yeah, well, he came into the ball game averaging 9.9 .9 yards a carry on 13 carries. See, and he was a good runner in high school. And the Rocket, we get word, was injured in the first half and isn't even there. Lincoln, touchdown. It's just an eye toss play away from the slot formation back into the sideline. They get it deep. It gets a good block right there by Kudawa. There's poor tackling right there, and he ricochets. This guy has that low center of gravity, and he just slid with the tackle, takes it into the end zone. That's his third touchdown this year. Big round of applause for that young man. He's got my salute. I'll tell you, I've been around football for a long time. I haven't seen many sophomores uh, do any better or even maybe as good as this young man did today. What a talent. When you're being pummeled. Yeah. I mean, it isn't as though he's been in the game here the last quarter. I can see why Fred Jackson, the coordinator, is so excited about the guy. But meanwhile, the Iowa Hawkeyes, they did what they had to do here today. They came back after that heartbreaking loss and Matt Rogers. Let's not overlook what Rogers did here this afternoon either. He threw four touchdown passes, count them four, yeah. and moved the Hawkeyes to within one win of Pasadena. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to assist those outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. The last game of the season is history in Kinnick Stadium. Hayden Fry making sure that he goes out to shake Fred Aker's hand. 